Good morning. Thank you for coming. It's my pleasure to be able to uh, speak to you today. Today we're going to uh, continue the theme of uh, Invest Cambodia, which is uh, a mantra now of the American Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we have sort of crafted that phrase uh, to uh, encourage now uh, investment in uh, Cambodia, but not only just investment coming in, but diversification of investment because the country's FDI is 50% uh, from China, if not more, and we need to uh, diversify the foreign direct investment in the country. And that's now a mission uh, of AmCham is to uh, get uh, more diverse in, uh, investment from different countries, and of course America being one. So thank you for allowing me to have this presentation today because I really am excited about Invest Cambodia. And I want to tell the international community why they should invest in Cambodia. Okay, so let's begin. So those of you who uh, don't know me, I am uh, the president of the American Chamber of Commerce. I've uh, been president for about 18 months. And I'm also the uh, group chief executive for uh, Cambodian Investment Management Holdings, which has a series of companies. My uh, career has been in banking. I spent 17 years with Citibank. Uh, about three years with ANZ. I'm originally from New York. I started on Wall Street in New York. And uh, from there, I worked in London, uh, Brussels, Hong Kong, uh, Thailand, and Indonesia, mostly in corporate banking as corporate bank head and uh, also as uh, transaction banking for regional jobs. I started my own business here about 12 years ago. And uh, we have a series of companies which I'll touch upon. So these are the companies that uh, I am uh, either chairman or CEO. We have uh, our Biggest business is tax and accounting. Uh, corporate finance uh, is also mergers, acquisitions, private equity. And we have an audit company, we have a service office, we have an HR company, and we have an insurance brokerage company. I'm gonna spend a minute to talk about the American Chamber of Commerce, because that's, uh, again, the mantra for Invest Cambodia, it sort of uh, was uh, spawned from there. So the American Chamber of Commerce has presently 220 members. We've uh, risen from uh, about 123 people in the beginning of January 2021, 100, uh, sorry, 123 members, and now we're 220. So that's about 80% growth. Our focus on our members is members are customers. We, we run our chamber like a business, and our members are really uh, what's important to us to enrich their experience and provide value to them. There's seven advocacy committees uh, for the American Chamber of Commerce. One of them is real estate. Tom O'Sullivan is the uh, chairman of that committee. Uh, this, this month we'll be doing a survey for uh, AmCham's first annual market survey, real estate survey, which uh, will be in the middle of the month or towards the end of the month. So real estate committee is one of our largest committees, one of the most active committees. Uh, given the fact that the Ministry of Economy and Finance now is uh, becoming very, very uh, stringent uh, with regulations, uh, it's up. we've been doing a really good job of uh, communicating what you need to do to register for your license, uh, what the process is, um, and what's down the road for real estate agents and brokers. It's going to only get more regulated. So uh, it's good to be part of the Chamber of Commerce to help you with these with issues that you may have um, as this market is now emerging and being regulated. So we're, we're one of the most active chambers. We, we really welcome Khmer companies. We're about really 50% of our membership now is uh, Cambodian. And uh, we also just launched the AmCham channel, which uh, this speech will be on as well. There's uh, obviously a lot of videos on all the activities of the American Chamber of Commerce. Okay, let's, let's talk about Invest Cambodia. So uh, as I said, we come up with this, uh, it's not, it's, I wouldn't say it would be completely new, but we're really pushing now the American Chamber of Commerce, Invest Cambodia. Cambodia, I think, uh, needs to get the reputation it deserves as an attractive investment center. Cambodia now is the Asian tiger of the 21st century. That's really the tagline here. Cambodia is the Asian tiger of the 21st century. So those of you that don't have gray hair or uh, are the sort of millennial, the younger generation, what does Asia Tiger mean? Asia Tiger was coined as a statement when uh, in the 60s up to the 90s when Hong Kong, Singapore, South Korea, and Taiwan 
were really underdeveloped countries, and they became industrialized and had high exceptional growth rates. Industrialized and high exceptional growth rates. Does that sound familiar? That's Cambodia. It's industrialized and having high growth rates. GDP 7% plus for uh, two decades on average. There was later what was called the uh, tiger cub economies, and those are familiar to us. They're neighbors. They're Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam. Those were seen as tiger economies. Cambodia has not yet been seen as a tiger economy, and it should be. So I want to say now, Cambodia should be recognized as the tiger economy, and in fact, the Asian tiger economy of the 21st century. That's, that's why you should invest in Cambodia as well. Another reason we should address this misguided perception that Cambodia is a poor country. It's not a poor country. The world still thinks it's a poor country. It's not a poor... How many Rolls Royces do you see a day? Is this a poor country? It's not a poor country. And, and this is not Cambodians believing it's a poor country. This is what the outside world believes. That still maybe Cambodia is a poor country. So it's not underdeveloped. And even still, you talk to people in uh, other parts of the world, Europe and the US, they think we're recovering from war or genocide. This, this is 50 years ago. So this is not, this, these perceptions of Cambodia need to be really changed. So this, this is far behind Cambodia. Cambodia is a lower middle income country. A lower middle income country is comparable to some other mi lower middle income countries. That's Argentina, Brazil, and the Philippines. We're comparable, Cambodia, to those countries, those cub Asian tigers that started the late 90s and 2000s as being recognized as Asian tigers. We're comparable to them. So we have to change perception of what Cambodia is as an investment center. And we're aspiring to be a middle income status country. That's seen to be happening in 2030, but I'm saying it's gonna happen before then. It will happen in 2028, I'm sure of it. We're growing that fast. We have to also address what you see almost in every article about disadvantages of working, of, of investing in Cambodia. What are those disadvantages? Poor infrastructure. Is it really poor infrastructure? I don't think so anymore. We have new airports coming online. The Ministry of Public Works and Transport under His Excellency Sun Chantol has done a fantastic job of uh, building expressways and highways. Uh, in terms of electrification, it's now 87% of the country. That's, a, that's an incredible figure. 87% of the country now is electrified, considering that 75% of the country is, is in fact rural. So that takes a lot of effort when 75% of your population is in rural areas and then electrifying it in the country at 87 percent. Takes a lot of effort to do that. We are criticized for deforestation. Still 46 percent of the country is forests. Life expectancy is now 70 years old, which is rivaling Europe uh, in the U.S. and uh, North America, which is around 78, 79. It's, we were 58 years old in 2000. Now we're 70. Only in 20 years we went from 58 years old life expectancy to 70. We made major strides in doing uh, business in the legal system. Is, is, is improved greatly. And I have never seen uh, in all the countries I've been in the engagement by the government with the private sector that you see here. It's unprecedented. Working groups, the size of the work, the private and government working group D, the tax working group, all the working groups around tourism and other industries. The government is highly engaged. Engaging the chambers, and creating subcommittees and consultation groups. This government is very engaged in, in working with the private sector. The really in simple terms, why invest in Cambodia? Cambodia's economy is, uh, had an average uh, growth rate of 7.7% 7 .7 between 98 and 2019. Now COVID came, hurt us a little bit, but we're back on track. But for 22 decades, 7.7%. That's a true Asian tiger. We're estimated that we've probably grown about 3%-ish <clears throat> in 21, we'll probably grow around 53 in 22.
country allows 100% foreign ownership, and this is a question I get from investors all the time. Can I be 100% owned? My company, I want to have my, I want to protect and have my own company. This doesn't happen in our neighbors. Our neighboring countries don't allow 100% foreign ownership in most cases. They have to get a shareholder, local shareholder. We don't have to do that. You can own 100% as a foreigner. It's a massive, massive uh, advantage. We're a dollarized economy. There's a lot of uh, debate around this. Uh, I've been an advocate for um, maintaining it. It's still in the 85% range. <clears throat> uh, it's helped us. It's helped us a lot. Uh, we've seen our neighbors, especially during the uh, currency crises, really lose value of currency. The Philippines, uh, the last 12 months, has lost 12% of the value of their currency. 12% of the peso has been in decline. And, this, and we saw what's happened in the Asian crisis. So the dollar index has never been as high since 2002. The dollar is the strongest it's been in 20 years. And that's really helping us. How does that help us? Oil is priced in dollars. Commodities are priced in dollars. Having a strong currency is very important. We don't have that exposure. So an investor coming in saying, okay, I'm going to invest in uh, this market, has to look at two things. They have to look at the, the value of the asset going up or down, or they have to look at the value of the currency going up and down. So when you're looking at investments in a, in a market, you have to look at your currency risk just as much as you have to look at your asset risk. So we have a dollarized economy and we have the strongest, one of the strongest currencies in the world right now, which is the dollar is at a record high uh, over the last two decades. Strategic location, we're, we're right in the middle of Asia. Perfect, perfect positioning. And with the port coming in in Sinanakville, it's going to be very good for us for in terms of uh, being part of the supply chain. It's been a great progress on uh, the law of investment. This was probably one of the most um, meaningful law of investment changes uh, over the past two years. So qualified investment projects do have some good tax incentives. <clears throat> Cambodia has done a fantastic job with free trade agreements and the Regional Comprehensive Eco Economic Partnership. You have already seen the results of these, how it's affected the economy so positively. So these, these treaties that are being signed by the government are, are having a real positive effect on trade, trade for us with other countries. I'm not a big fan of the next one, the minimum capital requirements of $1,000, but you know, you come into the country, you're a foreigner, you have a thousand bucks, and there you go, you have a company. I think capitalization should be increased, uh, it's too low, uh, but other countries have a dollar, so I guess uh, maybe I'm not the smartest guy in the room on this, but uh, it's still at a thousand dollars, you could just start a company. Corporate taxes are generally low, we're below the average. The average in ASEAN is about 23%. We're at 20% for profit tax. And we have a very useful population. 16 million Cambodians in the country, uh, around half are under 25 years old. This is a, a millennial population that's gonna really make a big difference for us in years to come. I'm doing a little data bank here because I want to uh, give you an idea of how the country has changed in the last 20 years. <clears throat> Our population is now close to 17 million. Uh, it was about 12 million in 2000. That's not really massive growth. The population isn't growing much. I think there will be a better immigration policy probably around uh, people coming in and uh, investing and actually living here. As Thailand did, it's a great place to live. As I said, life expectancy is uh, 70 years old, up uh, from 58 in 2000. What does that mean? means our healthcare system is getting better. It's, 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 it's um, the environment to live here is not as uh, difficult, not as complex. There's more people in white collar work. There's more people have access to healthcare. So it was one of the criticisms of Cambodia was the healthcare system. And it's getting much better. Look at the vaccinations. It just explains it all, right? The vaccination rate was the best in the world. Uh, population growth, 1.4%. Uh, Again, not high. Uh, it's in a downward trend. So I think Cambodians need to have more babies uh, because uh, the rest of the world is... <laughs> the population growth is a little bit better than us. Uh, and, um, well, not everywhere. I mean, Japan also is ha having problems there and some other countries, Singapore. 
but uh, we, we, need, we, we are now growing as a population. I want to, again, the, the, the new Asian tiger of the 21st century, why? GDP is almost $27 billion. Now, what was it in 2000? 3.6, 27 times growth of GDP in 20 years. That's amazing. Just absolutely amazing. And per capita, it's actually grown five times. So it was 300, you, you had 300 per capita in 2000. Now you have 1,591. Unemployment, 0.6%. I think we all feel that we can't get people. Uh, if you have a company, you're looking for people, you're constantly looking for people. It's very hard. We have one of the lowest unemployment rates in the world. Inflation, 2.9%. That's going to be a problem this year. It's a problem all over the world with the uh, Ukraine war. Oil and uh, commodity prices are hurting everybody, so I expect that to go up. I put this here, uh, the next one, because I believe Cambodia is one of the safest places in the world to live. So safety, health, if you're an investor, a foreign investor, you, you want to put money here, having a young workforce, this is another really important thing. How safe is it to live in this country? So intentional homicides, which is something the uh, World Bank tracks. It's not something I made up. This is tracked by the World Bank. Is two per 100,000, which was down uh, from two decades ago, five per 100,000. So it's one of the safest countries in the world. Give me an idea. We're two per 100,000. The United States is seven per 100,000. Almost four times the amount of uh, homicides that uh, we have. It's amazing. Philippines is about four as a sort of an Asian comparison. Government debt is uh, 10, 10 billion. That's a tick on Apple going up a quarter or a half. It's nothing. Indonesia is 414 billion compared to our 10 billion. So we have a lot of room to borrow. Borrowing to increase uh, investment in the country. Foreign uh, investment direct flows, uh, net inflows are about 14% of GDP. That's up from 3.2%. Again, almost uh, four times. And access to internet is very important. So mobile cellular su subscriptions are, for 100 people are 126 in 2020 versus 1.1. Uh, so in 2000, one person out of 100 had a mobile phone uh, to uh, connection. Now there's one everybody has, and in fact 20% have more. I've been asked to talk about what are the economic pillars of Cambodia. So garments historically have been one of the, uh, the largest economic pillar. Uh, and that remains pretty much the same. Real estate and construction was in second place before COVID and uh, tourism and agriculture to follow. <clears throat> that really uh, is beginning to change, but it's still very much there's concentration in those areas. Uh, GDP is expected to grow 5.3% in 222 and 6.5% in 223. So we got to get back to our 7.7% average. And I think we will next year. And I think the silver bullet will be China. Because China will open up next year, and that will really give us uh, an infusion, a massive infusion in the economy. Inflation will be high this year. There's nothing we can do about it. It's out of our control. It's out of our control because it's really affected what's happening in uh, Ukraine with Russia. And that's going to continue for a while, so expect high inflation around the world, globally. Agriculture in Cambodia is finally beginning to realize is being a real core part of the economy. So now it's 22% uh, of the economy. Uh, the industries contribute about 35%. The service sector is about 37%. So there was a strong recovery in 221 in light manufacturing. Light manufacturing is garments, footwear travel, goods recovered exceptionally well. Uh, Non-garment productivity is uh, also robust. It, 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 exports rose 30.7%. This, however, is another issue because the concentration of exports is with the United States is almost 40%. As much as I talk about China being 50% or more in FDI, also a big risk to have the United States at uh, 38 to 40% of exports. We need to diversify our base of who we export to. And it really hasn't been because of EBA. It's just that the US economy recovered really fast. And there was a high demand. It's a high, it's a major consumer economy, the United States. Agriculture exports rose 19% in 2021. There's a lot of the, R, the RSCP, uh, these trade treaties are going to help agriculture a lot. 
And I expect uh, th there's going to be high growth as, uh, that could continue with agriculture. It's becoming a really good part of the economy now, contributing to the economy. It's uh, growth in cassava, banana, rubber. Services contracted 0.4%, not bad. This is the restaurant industries, the hotel industries. Um, this, but there's been a decline in food, transportation, and so forth. And that's expected with what's happened. There's been restrictions on international travel, so there's been a huge drop in, obviously, uh, arrivals in the airport, down 85%. I was just in Thailand last week. It's coming back strong. Tourism is coming back strong. They're having record tourism again since COVID. I expect that to uh, drip along here somehow. I hope so. So uh, we should see that uh, get better, but it's not going to get anywhere near where we were in, uh, before COVID. It's going to take some time. Our trading partners, uh, the trade is, uh, of course, because of these trade treaties is, is, is growing. So there's strong momentum of Cambodia's merchandise exports. We expect also that uh, FDI to, to grow quite a bit. Industrial output is expanded by 8.1% in 2022. We expect 9.1% in uh, 2023. Again, garments will grow. Uh, strong demand by uh, relocation of orders from the People's Republic of China and neighboring countries. That means... Expect investment in Cambodia, garment, the garment industry should expect more investment because there's a relocation of investment from China and our neighboring countries to Cambodia. Expect that to continue. The service sector is expected to rebound, 4.8% um, this year, 6.8% in uh, 2023. Uh, we'll reflect the rebound in hotels, restaurants from the contraction of the last two years and, and wholesale and retail trade, um, transport and communications and real estate. So as um, part of the transaction that you just uh, probably read about with um, Kiwi Mart being sold to Big C, uh, you see that wholesale and retail trade is going to increase. Big plans from for Big C here, big plans for other retail trade organizations to invest in the country. So we expect uh, wholesale and retail to grow quite a bit. Other economic drivers, great job by the government on the law of investment, uh, which was adopted in uh, October 221. It will attract more domestic and foreign investment into manufacturing. I was very pleased uh, just about three weeks ago to see the Ford assembly plant open. Not only because it was a US investment, but it was an assembly plant. This is a higher skilled manufacturing required. It's not producing garments with sewing machines. It's an assembly plant, again, higher level of skills for manufacturing. So see, we'll see more of that. The law of investment has provided incentives. Um, it, it's a comprehensive, transparent, and predictable legal framework to make Cambodia more attractive. So the law of investment, a very big positive uh, this year. The specific incentives uh, provided are uh, regional and global supply chains and for production of electronics, spare parts, mechanical and machinery equipment and agro processing. Again, higher skilled manufacturing jobs. Very important for us. Uh, the new regional trade agreements, as I said, and repeatedly are really having an impact on the economy already and will continue to do so. And the government has a plan. It absolutely has a plan. On December 22nd, the government launched the Strategic Framework and Program for Post-Recovery 221 to 223. Three pillars, recovery, reform, resilience, economic diversification, trade facilitation, law on special economic zone. There's a plan, there's a structure, and it will be good for the country and the people. So thank you very much. That's my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions.